Next step is we're going to show a more advanced scenario using a test that I've built. Uh, probably took about two, two and a half, three hours. And this is a little more complex here. So we've parameterized things like the host name, the test mode, if we want to run against the uh, uh, editor or if we want to, run, want to run standalone. I'm going to skip over a few of these things like the integration with Apple tools and Backtrace uh, configuration that we have there. We've got if we're, we're in standalone mode, we want to wait for game. If we're running as a, uh, uh, sorry, if, if we're not in standalone mode, we want to uh, connect to the editor. Otherwise, we're going to launch using the Windows executable or the Mac, Mac executable, depending on which platform we're running against. And then we do that same wait for object and then click within the, the initial initialization phase here. Now this test actually goes through two full zones and the, the objective in the first zone is to find uh, this info post object and when we're there we're going to press down and jump. So I won't go over the full details here because we don't have time uh, but once again this is all available in the tutorial on our website. Um, but just to give you a sense of, of how this works uh, when we're at the post that we're looking for, basically comparing the player position to that of the info post plus or minus one on the x-axis, we're going to press down and jump. If we're to the left of, of a gap that occurs in the level before that info post, we need to find a way over. We're going to press to the to the right and jump. And if we're if we fall in the hole, we need to press back to the left and jump. Uh, and these each have different amount of times associated with them. So we use what's called uh, the, well, the, the number of frames, but um, specifically the, the frames per second, which is going to allow us to control how long we're, we're holding that uh, input for. And we do that because on one machine versus another, the performance might be very different. So rather than inputting a hard-coded number of frames, we're going to use the frames per second to tell us, you know, plus or minus uh, a few frames, roughly how long we want to hold our input for. We can be very specific, uh, but in this case, I found that it's it's just easier. Now, once we've reached that info post and we press down and jump, we get to the second level. And in the second zone, zone two here, um, we're going to actually look for another object, the key key icon, uh, which we're, we show here with the get object field value. And we're going to look for not its position, but its color. So when I've reached that key, the, the color of the key on the screen will change from a, a zero alpha blend to a one. And until it does, we're going to perform these actions. So if, if we hit the key, then, then great. We move on to the next zone. We're going to break this loop. Otherwise, if we're to the left of the key, move right. And if we're to the right of the key, move left. And that's it. So that's very, very quickly explaining uh, all of these steps for a, a more complex scenario. But again, it didn't take very long to build using the, the tools that we provide. So I'm going to click play on this. Let's watch the test in action. Now in the top left corner here, we can see the time and date and the mouse coordinates. This is another feature of the game driver agent that shows you uh, exactly what's going on during replay. We see that play mode was initialized, and then we have the Ellen character running through the level. She jumped over the, the gap on the first try, which is great, because the last time I did this, she, she struggled there for a bit. Uh, and then she's reached the info post, presses down, and jumps into the next level. Here we have in the top right-hand corner these three keys, as I mentioned. And you can see the color of those are black, so she's going to move to the right and jump until we reach that key. And then we see the key color has changed here. The alpha blend has changed so that it's now visible. And then she's just going to run and exit the zone. Now, when things go really well, uh, sometimes it has to actually finish the rest of the loop before it will, will continue. Um, but rest assured, once those other steps are done and we verified that the key color has changed, she exits the, the, the loop and leaves the zone. And there you have it. Coming back to our test here, we see that, that zone one has, has passed. Zone two, I may have, have uh, ended that a little too abruptly on the, the test side, um, but that's okay. I know that it passed because I saw it visually. And I'm just gonna click stop here.
Now the next step, if we have time, is to run this in standalone mode. So I've already built my um, application here as a standalone executable, so I'm gonna quit Unity. And I'm going to hit run here. And I've just changed the from IDE test mode to standalone, and then I'm gonna hit run again. And this should pop up the standalone build, which is going to execute the same scenario. Now we've already seen this running, so <clears throat> there's not a whole lot more to explain here, but I think it's just cool. Now using this method, we're able to test the, the functionality of the game on multiple platforms using multiple configurations. We're able to output to an iOS device or to a Windows machine or to a, a PC or Windows machine, sorry. Um, and, and verify that the functionality is the same. Then we, we can run these tests in parallel and therefore get a lot more value out of our testing than we would if we were testing manually.